So we are here to talk about Thermostat, which is a uh, new, nice, open source instrumentation and monitoring uh, tool. And Let's just probably start. we should start. Well, we can assume that we are famous enough, or maybe we should introduce ourselves. Yeah, let's so, introduce ourselves first. OK, so I am Mario Torre. I work for Red Hat as a senior software engineer in the Java platform. I'm Roman Kenke. I'm also working for Red Hat and uh, yeah, Java platform. platform. So let's start explaining what is, what is actually Thermostat. So Thermostat is an open source tool for uh, capturing, diagnosing, monitoring, tuning, and profiling the Java virtual machine. That's one way to see it, actually. Yeah. Yeah, another way to see it would be, uh, you can say it's a kind of an information hub where we collect and display data coming from Java virtual machine or the operating system or whatever. So various sources, basically, exactly. What are, so if I want to extend this concept, actually, how I can see thermostat, basically? I can see this as a, uh, first of all, as an information hub that collects the vertical stack of the information. What do you mean this? We can go very low uh, on deep from the kernel, so collecting data from the kernel. A little bit higher, operating system, other application, other tool that come with the operating system, memory management, and so on. Then, let's say that this is the most important part. What we are most interested in is actually the OpenJDK, which means either an isolated VM, or it can be something more complex, like um, an application framework or application server that sits on top of the Java virtual machine that runs other uh, application. That's not all, I think, no? No, if I want to take a higher level view, and um, I can say we can um, get data from horizontal levels. We start with a local JVM, look at this, or we can have a remote JVM sitting in some other room or completely different continent, whatever. Or we can even try to uh, monitor and do all these things with a whole lot of JVMs sitting on various machines, like a cluster, or some people like to call this cloud, <laughs> whatever. So, so but what it does this? also the coffee, or just makes the developers happy. <laughs> no, I think it doesn't. <laughs> no okay, then. Again, what it is actually, we say it's an instrumentation tool, but how, what are the features of uh, Thermostat that we want to, to see today? So we have some uh, features that are already uh, fully implemented, uh, working, other features are work in progress. We will show you in a few minutes the demo about what is currently implemented. Just to have a very high level overview, we can collect data, we say, from the operating system. So we can have uh, VM-specific CPU usage, but not only, also the overall CPU usage this is the, the, that comes uh, from, from the kernel. Uh, or we can call it memory uh, usage. Again, for, for in the case of uh, Java virtual machines, we have several uh, ARM memories, and we can collate this data together with uh, the, the regions, the garbage collector, and see uh, a profiling uh, across time so that we can see uh, how an application behaves across time. Um, and you can actually correlate this with GC invocations and these GC things. GC invocation, exactly. So we can see if there are memory leaks or uh, if there are too many uh, collection events and so on. Right. Same thing for uh, trend monitoring. This is also uh, a, a tool that tries to collate that data from a multiple uh, variety of sources. In, in the screenshot, we say we just see um, a, a view that is a pie chart of uh, the execution of a single thread. But there are also more complex views that collate the number of threads in, in their time with the timeline and try to uh, uh, be uh, quite accurate in, in, in what we see so that we can uh, collect and analyze this, this data. And we will also see some heap dump analysis um, tools. Oh, and not screenshots. So do, do yeah, no screenshots for this. Uh, it dump analysis, class loader information, and we will see also some typical uh, usages for, for class loading. You know, typically, all the class loading uh, graphs look uh, the same way, which is normal, but it's possible to see if something goes wrong yeah. uh, exactly from, from this analysis. We say we were gathering data from a variety of sources. What are those sources, Roman? So we have um, basically three of them right now. One is um, JVM stat, which is a 
kind of internal API that sits in the JVM and provides us data about the running application. Another one that is a bit similar is um, JMX, which is a, kind of, it's a public API for yeah, monitoring uh, JVM applications. We are also getting data from, um, from the file system, from slash proc in this case, uh, which is provide, provided by the Linux kernel. And yes, some of the things that we are currently working on is um, including data from third party tools like um, system tab or um, O profile for getting this low level um, profiling data. And those tools will allow us to cross the border between Java and native sites. So for example, with, with system tab and O profile, we will be able to not only look at Java code, but also when Java code enters into JNI or native code, we will see how uh, they interact and what kind of code they have. Would be possible, for example, to analyze, I don't know, let's say we have uh, a thread is a little bit funny, but from the Java point of view, it's all fine, but then we can see if it's stuck yeah. in a system code or something. For example, no? yeah, something like this, yes. So how it does work? What is the architecture we choose for, for uh, uh, our tool? In a moment, we will see also why it is. But anyway, the architecture is this. We basically have uh, a division between who is collecting data and who is analyzing this uh, and where this data uh, ends up. Stored, yeah. Uh, this picture makes it very, very uh, generic on purpose because we want to support a number of different situations. The very simple high-level overview is this. We have monitoring agents. Those agents just collect data. They, they uh, can react to some events that are guided by the clients, but generally speaking, they collect data from all the sources they are uh, capable of. Then they put this information in a storage facility, and clients application, which are uh, thermostat clients, uh, to collect this data and analyze it and inform the user of events or uh, other situation. And the important aspect here is that those monitoring agents are uh, very small and lightweight. They don't incur um, significant runtime overhead. We can run this on a production machine without um, worrying that it, this will slow down significantly anything. And as soon as they have the data, they just push it off to the storage. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's always the cloud. Um, yeah, so we were saying about the, the, the agents. So we say the agents basically are very stupid in nature because yeah. they just collect data. But the client actually do a lot of computation and work. Right? We have a number of clients uh, so that we can add up to different situations. For example, let's suppose we want to monitor. Uh, so I am a developer. I'm very unhappy because my application crashes all the time. It consumes a lot of memory. I really cannot figure out what, what's going on. It's not that I'm going to configure a cloud uh, environment just to, to see a little bit of uh, uh, help data. No. So what I do, I just start the client, the GUI client, the little agent. Then I don't care about the rest. Then I am a system administrator. I don't have any. Uh, X11 or, or uh, uh, graphics uh, development uh, the machine, but I have a remote SSH session. What I do, then we can uh, we offer a command line tool. Even if the GUI uh, is obviously the most advanced, even in, func in functionality, uh, in terms of functionality, the GUI allows um, uh, provides a shell that gives the same information as the. Uh, the, the graphical application because they, they share the same uh, um, controller's code, uh, but also gives the, 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 a chance to, uh, to script the, um, uh, the functionality. So we can, for example, list a VM, perform a net dump. We will not get the fancy graph, but we will get a lot of numbers that we can then uh, parse in a, in, a, in, a, in a script. So it can be part of the workflow for, for those things. Not only this, no, we also have something else in, in the plate, I think. Yeah, we are currently working on Eclipse plugin, um, which will be useful for you know, including this whole thing in, in the developer workflow. Um, well, this is work in progress. And another thing is um, a web frontend. So you can use thermostat from your browser. This would be um, a good thing to have for uh, web developers, obviously. So if they fire up their application and application server, they can go to a URL, look at thermostat, and see what's going on. Um, Speaking about the, the web front end, I, last time I heard 
from somebody in, inside our source. <laughs> we had two actually web front end. It's not actually front end in, in a strict sense. It's two components. What is it about? Uh, we are working on two components. One is the web front end, and another one is the web service, which provides a kind of um, common API for this uh, storage. So uh, when we will come to this later. Basically, you can, com can write an agent or client yourself and then interface them with this web service and write something. Yeah, so with the REST different. API for, for I yeah, think REST -like I have. REST-like API is not really REST. It's not really REST, okay. But I think I have some use case for this. For example, the ability to plug this in, I don't know, an open shift uh, implementation so that you can have your web front end, this, uh, we call it actually web storage because uh, we will see a little bit later in, in more data. The storage implementation can be implemented as a set of web services, actually. So yes. this would be useful in a case where you have uh, monitoring agents, a cloud solution like OpenShift that collects the data. You don't have to care then of setting up your clusters or uh, databases, scalability, because it's taken care by by OpenShift in this case, yes. and then uh, your client. It can be also the, the web itself. But now there is the big, big question. I know that everybody wanted to, give, to say this in the question and answer, but we will <laughs> anticipate why we are doing this from scratch another tool. Why not using, I don't know, Visual VM or uh, JRocket, whatever. Right, that's a good question. Um, so we had a couple of ideas what such a tool should do. and. Um, so one of this is um, we wanted to be able to monitor multiple, up to many hundreds of hosts. So we had some scalability requirements. We wanted this, this tool to be extensible by plugins so that people can write their own extensions or data agents inside their own applications or stuff like this. We wanted the, the um, data collection to be very lightweight so that we don't incur runtime overhead in, in production systems, for example. And we wanted this to be open source. And um, as it turn out, turns out, none of the existing tools provide all of this. So all of those tools provide a subset of those, but none of them really provided us with yeah, all of those things that we wanted. So we right. sat down and started our own. Yeah, but then also the, the, about the license, I, I put this bold in this slide because it's important to know that this is the same license as OpenJDK itself. So it's class, right. but GPL plus the class, but exception. So we, we were talking about the sensibility. How does it work? What, what are the technologies we are using uh, under the hood, actually, to allow this sensibility? But first of all, especially by for, the, for the GUI client, because this is where it's mostly visible when implementing it. But this is by for the whole thermostat um, application uh, stack. This is based on SGI, so we have a set of services that are exported, that are used by uh, plugins uh, um, implementers. They basically <coughs> provide the plugin API for uh, thermostat. For every aspect, so it's possible to, for example, let's say I want, uh, okay, the developers were not smart enough to think about, uh, I don't know, collecting some specific kind of data. It would be possible to extend this functionality to uh, create a new data layer, uh, some abstraction like this. Absolutely, yes. Yeah. You can write your own agent that does collect some data and push it off to do thermostat storage, and you can also write your own uh, GUI or command line client or Eclipse extension or whatever to actually show this data to sysadmins users. And this is used actually everywhere in thermostat already because yeah, exactly. there are the, all, all the, the functionality is provided via plugins. So there is nothing included in the default uh, thermostat. Oh, that's not true. <laughs> we will see this. Demo we time. We will see this, yeah. Okay, so we call the demo time the Mark Reynolds effort. Uh, hopefully not. <laughs> hopefully not. Let's see if it's true or not. So. So this starts, so actually this is starting the agent, I start collecting data from running VM. This is for starting the GUI. It's going to take a bit because of the network. Actually, I 
You did pray to the demon gods, right? <laughs> yeah, I know. This is the, the problem. I say Mark Rhino left, but no. Does it come out on the correct screen? Yes, I hope so. That's the, the, the what I'm... Interesting. Yeah, should be there by now. Something is up anyway. Right, try it again. I don't want to stop it. Yeah, okay. It's there? No. It's going to be. Yeah. So, this is what happens when you run development code. Never do this again. Okay, so. Um, okay, this is how I present the, the, the very basic uh, interface for the, for the GUI client. There is an, an issue uh, collector. It says the number of virtual machines are currently tracking in the live. Then you can go on uh, host uh, um, overview. It basically tells you about uh, the overview, the processor, the speed, the network interfaces, and so on. Processor, memory consumption. So let's say some. Uh, let's see some uh, uh, use case where I did put it. Sorry. So for example, let's see, I want to analyze an application. This, I created this before. It's an application that keeps using all the memory. So it's always growing, growing, growing. Since there is auto money in this machine, it's probably not going to crash while doing the demo, but we can see how it behaves. First of all, you can see CPU usage of the application. We'll see garbage collection cycles. It doesn't do anything because, I mean, the purpose is this. It will. It will at some point, actually, because, the, yeah, it's interesting. The Bitcoin machine tries to be alive. So we can start recording uh, thread. This, since this is a very expensive operation, we don't enable this by default. We always give some control to the user. So this starts uh, tracking threads. You see we have some uh, VM capabilities that we can try. So if the VM doesn't support everything, we have uh, a list here of things that we can track and monitor. Get a table with the overview and a timeline. What do the colors stand for? So the colors are, uh, there is a legend here. You can see there are, uh, this represents all the various state of the thread. So uh, uh, typically, we will see runnable blogger waiting and time waiting. We will not see new and terminated because <laughs> the virtual machine actually doesn't give us this information. If a thread is terminated, it just doesn't appear anymore. But we can we still record this. Okay. So it's possible to have some data by clicking on that. Getting a thread dump, as we uh, showed in the screenshot before. It's actually Here very fast. you can fast. actually see this uh, memory leaking application growing its memory usage over time. Yes, exactly. Yeah. Yes? I don't hear you. This is no, the, the dump is from the VM that is being tracked. So it's the agent that is collecting it. But it's analyzed in the, so what happens in this case, when we request a thread, uh, help dump, the agent, there is a communication channel between agent and, and clients, uh, between actually between client and agents. And the clients request the thread, the help dump, 
the agent perform this on the VM that is being triggered in that m moment. And then it stores the, the, the dump in the database, but it doesn't perform any analysis on this. So there is, there is raw data in the database, and then the client uh, grabs this data, is informed by the agent that there is actually new data coming. So since it's possible to do more uh, dumps, of course, so, and since this information then stays in the database because it can be analyze it later, then it's collected there. Here we can, um, this is a histogram that shows us um, which types of objects take up how many, how much memory. What usually happens is that char arrays at, is R at the very top of them. Um, then we can also um, browse, search, search for specific objects. Um, what would be a good type? I don't know, hash map? Yeah, probably hash map is stuff like this. You can of string also. Yeah, or string. Uh, hash map is okay. So you can search for specific objects here. You can, um, if you found something, you can follow the object graph through it by referrals or by references. And you can actually say, okay, find me the root to the GC. Uh, okay, this window comes up somewhere. This is strange. With no, wait. Let me try again because it. maybe it's. Uh, Somewhere is the application window. I yeah, it's the, ah, it's all <laughs> exactly. Sorry, it's my fault. So it's here. Exactly, and this shows you the, uh, the connection to the GC root. Why is this object had in memory? If you have a suspicion that this guy is uh, leaking, you can find out why this is the case. So we are still organizing the UI anyway, but the functionality is quite advanced already because it's possible exactly to find uh, GC roots and, and, and all the information. I want to show something else now. It's very interesting. It's the memory use. So those are all the various regions you want to uh, explain a little bit more in data how those regions yeah, The heap is divided into, into various um, regions. And you can see here um, at, the, at the top of it is the very short-lived object region. It's called Eden. There are various other ones. And at the bottom here is the perm region, which is mm, latest OpenJK. It's gone, but we still have it here. And you can see how um, objects are allocated on the Eden region here in the upper panel. And then over time, they progress into the old region here. This is why this guy keeps growing. Um, yes, the, 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 the first one is the most active one. Uh, obviously, what else do we have? Here we, yeah, and then this, we can relate this to the GC activity. Whenever this GC guy kicks in, you can see uh, objects being uh, either move between those regions or deallocated or whatever. Or maybe not, this is why we are leaking here. <laughs> yes, exactly. And those, the graph shows there, there, if you see, for each graph there are actually three uh, kind of information. First of all is the timeline, so you can correlate with the garbage collection. So how the memory gets allocated or uh, collected. Then there is this, which means is the usage. So there is a capacity, and it shows you how much of these capacities are currently used. But then this capacity is also dynamic. It, can, it means that there, it's possible that it gets uh, increased over time, and this is yeah. struggled by the second bar, right? which is the small one here. And finally, the classes. I was saying before, most of the class loader uh, uh, graphs look the same because uh, the application tend to load all the classes right at startup, and this is why you get this huge peak, and then it stabilizes. That should be the case. Yes. So, we close this demo, and the application didn't crash. You can also show some bits of the command line interface. Yes. If you want this? They are common. This, uh, this is a bit broken. Okay. 
So, so or, I don't know the shell maybe. Oh, it's okay. And it usually works like this: you enter commands, you put parameters like um, uh, what we can do, um, something simple like VM or oh, Italian keyboard. You know, the uh, let's put uh, the first one here. Host ID. So this command VM start will give us some just general information. It's just columns of numbers that we can later process or whatever. Basically, all the functionality that we can have in the UI we can also have on the command line, which is could be useful for scripting or for you know remote um, monitoring. If you only have an SSH connection or something like this, um, you can do that. Um, what else? Yeah, this is Let's about it for the demo. Let's go back to the presentation. Yeah. Oh, the Mark Ryan effort kind Didn't of. Didn't happen, huh? Very much, a little, little bit at the beginning. Okay, so what's next? What we are cooking? So first of all, we want to have NUMA support. What is NUMA? A NUMA support means that we want to be able to um, find out um, when objects are allocated on one thread that is um, you know, assigned to one processor and then used by other threads and on different processors, which is uh, kind of incurring overheads that we don't want. Because we are changing, no? Yeah, so if this thing is changing, um, we want to detect this and yeah, provide some, some useful features for that. Um, then we want to be able to actually tune the JVM live while, it, while it's running, uh, change uh, parameters like uh, heap size or, I don't know, GC parameters or something like this. So uh, regarding this, so uh, not everything we are talking here is strictly speaking thermostat. Because, of course, part of our work is to create some of this functionality in the JVM itself because not everything is implemented. So OSPO doesn't give us all the capabilities, for example, for tuning or changing uh, right. other parameters. So we are creating also patches that we hope we can get into OSPO for uh, supporting, for example, for uh, NUMA JVM tuning. Same for uh, system top and low profile which is very important for low-level collection because system tap is exactly what can give us access to this information from coming from the kernel. It can tell us uh, if uh, exactly there is something uh, stuck in a system call or something else. Right. Then, of course, improving the, uh, the graphs and the GUI client, memory leak, deadlock analysis, even streaming. So we want to be able to uh, perform live uh, uh, analysis of the app instead of just uh, getting the dump from, from, the, uh, from the VM from time to time. And we already say about web services, the GLIS client and the web client. What we want to be able to do, we have seen already this in a very, uh, it's, it's very uh, in beginning of its development, there is an issue uh, view. What we want to improve this is to uh, give uh, the ability to inform the user that something is happening, but also to give some uh, instrument to correct uh, the problem. So for example, we can give some tips. Uh, memory is low, increase, use different data structures, or do any kind of analysis that can be useful for, uh, for uh, uh, the user. And then there is... Uh, what we call U2 mode versus drill down mode. U2 mode is basically what you have seen here. So we have, uh, we, since this data is in the database, so everything is collected, it can be uh, considered always kind of offline analysis. So the tool collects the data and then shows up. We can go back in time or forward in time and see when actually problems started to uh, appear and why. But there is also another way of uh, collating this data, which is the drill down mode. What is this yeah, that about? would be related to the, to the issues overview. So, um, when you start thermostat, um, there would be some issues overview, some kind of dashboard that gives you information about all the running VMs that you are monitoring and basically show you which VMs are okay, which, are, which VMs are running within their parameters, which ones go crazy, when, I don't know, use excessive memory or whatever. They could be shown in red and green and yellow or something, and then if you see that something goes 
out of control. You could click on one VM and then get a better, you know, lower level view, still high level, but can do some analysis and eventually you can go down to the lowest level and see which objects are allocated or I don't know what thread is doing what and those sort of things, very low level um, point of view. So going from very high level vertice view to very low level ground view of things. So that, that will be our idea. So still continuing the what's next. Um, we are we already discussed about open shift deployment, but also it's possible exactly for the same concept to also support something different than uh, than uh, Linux, at least from the point of view of the clients. That means other operating system for the GUI clients, but also iOS, Android, because it's actually an offline tool in the end, even if it's quasi real time. No. So there are any questions? No. No. <laughs> Uh, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know about Jabro itself, but if you if you consider, uh, uh, I don't know. The, the, so the, the, there, as as we said before, there are a number of sources. So uh, it's possible to have uh, instrumentation as at, at the agent level, which is, I think, what happens uh, in Jabro. No, uh, but it's also possible to get data from uh, the VM itself as uh, supported by. Uh, uh, system top uh, scriptlet. So there is something that is actually written in the OSPO code that uh, when the, the, the script is uh, uh, installed and then it gives us this information. So it's a, it's a, uh, there are multiple sources for this. The, the goal is always to be uh, lightweight as possible. So uh, um, you have seen in the, in the demo Everything that is expensive for the VM requires manual intervention from the user. So uh, it's possible to perform an app dump in a, in a running uh, uh, clustered application, but this is expensive. So if it's needed, then the user must do this manually. Okay. Yeah. Yes, actually, this is uh, this is a good point. For example, um, the goal is to support both uh, worlds, but try to be uh, lightweight. So it's not always easy, of course. So what what is the point here? Is to have um, we are saying this in the, in the uh, overview in the issue, but this is also possible to use from uh, agent side. So. If the client detects that something is going wrong, so there is an, a, cli a client that can be the, the command line tool that is actually analyzing the stream of data from the agent, it's possible to react to this. So for example, we can say uh, that we allow to uh, change uh, parameters at runtime of the VM, so fine tune the, the behavior. And we detect that there is some misbehavior from the uh, virtual machine on the remote host, we can tell the, the agent to change the parameters of this VM. But this doesn't have to be the user manually doing this. It's possible to use uh, scripting or uh, functionality that obviously we still didn't implement in that release, but we plan it so that we can say, OK, there is this misbehavior. Please change, uh, increase the memory, or, or do something else, or maybe just keep the application. <laughs> <laughs> that's not, not, not nice. Yeah, or maybe it's do some nice. specialized uh, you know, instrumentation or analysis or whatever. Okay, there is a number of tools available in this moment. Currently, we are using um, MongoDB, but we want to support uh, other sources. As I introduced it before, we call our web um, kind of middle layer web storage, 
which is actually our abstraction. So we have something that sits in the middle that provides access control list and uh, security and whatnot that can be installed in an application server itself. So like uh, JBoss or Tomcat, I mean, it doesn't have to be something uh, too, too resource intensive. And then this will actually talk to the database. There is, there is a number of databases we are supporting like MongoDB or PostgreSQL. We want to try to, to be flexible because not all the users have access or have the ability, especially in an in a, uh, enterprise context. They, they cannot simply say, okay, I don't care about uh, uh, Mongo, uh, PostgreSQL or maybe uh, Oracle DB, but then maybe we, we just require them to install Mongo, but this is not possible. So we want to be able to adjust to, to this kind of situation dynamically. So right now we are supporting MongoDB and we are working for uh, PostgreSQL, but this is basically supporting the two worlds, uh, no SQL and SQL. Once we, we finish for the SQL part, it's, it's, uh, it should support most of the uh, most important databases, basically. So, the agent is very lightweight. We, we performed some analysis with spec JVM. I think it was around uh, 2%, I think, or maybe even 1%. Now I don't remember exactly. We try to, uh, to keep this uh, number uh, very low. Not all the operations are lightweight. As I say, performing an app dump is expensive. So if the user keeps pressing app dump, especially for huge application, then, well, it's a stop the world operation. There is no way over it. But for, uh, for all the collection, it's actually very, very uh, lightweight because most of this data comes directly from the VM, and this information the VM already has. So we just uh, take advantage of this information that the VM must have, and it communicates outside the world, either via, via uh, uh, MXBin or uh, via SystemTap or other, or other options. Sorry, security? For the, you mean for the data? Yes, we are working on this. We are working on access control list and also on uh, encrypting the stream because especially when you do memory analysis, you don't want to have uh, you know, your banking application uh, stream out uh, credit card numbers and, and whatnot. So yes, this, this is taken into account. In this release, which should happen, this is the 0 0.4 release. Uh, it's, it, we named the releases after uh, um, uh, important books. This is the Marshall Chronicles release for the, for the opportunity. Anyway, um, in this release, we don't have yet support for uh, encrypting, and we don't have full support for uh, access control list. We, we have only... Um, Login, but it's like anybody that can log in the system can see everything. But then, in the next release, we will have full ACL support, and the only database layer that the users will see will be the this web-based uh, layer. So we will be able to use uh, Java 2 e security and and everything. Do you have any more questions? What else do we have? Resources. So, right. resources. I wrote it. Yeah, right. Or how to participate. So, basically, this is an open source tool. So, you are welcome to just come and say, I want this feature. You didn't implement it. Please accept my code because <laughs> I implemented it. Well, you can also ask us to implement, but it's nicer if you already did this. Anyway, this, those are uh, the main, the most important resources. So the home page uh, is hosted on classpad.org. This is the 
under the IST umbrella project. Uh, same for the code and the mailing list. We have a uh, thermostat on free node. We are always there 24 hours per day. We are always awake. We never go to sleep. And, and then there is this uh, OpenShift Red Dot Doc which is very interesting, so check it out. It's very, very, very interesting. And for this presentation, we use a number of Duke images. I think you recognize it from everywhere from the net. How did that end up at ICT, by the way? Most of the other cable projects are at GitHub? This is, actually, this is not a Jebos project, but I would like to invite uh, Deepak here on stage. Maybe he can give you a very short introduction on ICT and then you will go, we will all go in this room for the rest. So yeah, the, this is not a project as Mario said. Uh, it's meant to be, it's, an, it's intended to be for open JDK for anything. JBoss is just another application that runs on top of open JDK that can be monitored with this tool. Uh, but the tool itself is intended for open JDK, and to a certain extent, it will also work with other JDKs with limited functionality, which is why we wanted to have it independent. And IC seemed like the best place to put it, because that's where we incubate other projects, like our plugin and the zero and arm stuff is going into IC as well. So that's why. Thank you. Good. All right, I think uh, that's it. Oh. Thank Thanks. You.